Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to discuss a technique called return to PLT. Using this technique, we can abuse the procedure linkage table to bypass NX and ASLR. We will use the addresses of gadgets and functions from within the library. So this particular technique has some prerequisites for the attack to work. The binary should contain gadgets and functions that can be useful for our exploitation. And the binary should be compiled using no PIE flag as I mentioned in the last lecture. Now let's use the same binary that we have used to understand PLT and GOT concepts since it meets all the requirements. So let's switch to the virtual machine and let's begin writing this exploit. Let's quit from this GDB session. And let's quickly take a look at the make file. If you notice, we have no PIE flag set here. So our binary is good. And if you notice the vulnerable program, we have system function being used within the program. So we can try to make use of this system function and we want a shell but this particular system function is just executing date command we don't want to execute date command as part of our exploit so we will have to find out the string sh and we will have to pass that as an argument to this function so that's what we are going to do now if you observe this binary also has the string sh within the binary so we can try to find out the address of this string sh and we can pass that as an argument to this system function. So let's see how we can do that. As I mentioned earlier, this technique is going to bypass both NX as well as ASLR. So before we proceed further, let's quickly ensure that we have NX and ASLR enabled. If you notice, there is no dash Z exec stack flag here. That means by default, the stack will not be executable. And let's also go to the ASLR directory and let's quickly check if ASLR is enabled. Look at that, ASLR is enabled. Let's once again go back to this red 2 PLD directory and let's load the binary using GDB and let's quickly run checksec. And if you notice, even checksec shows that NX is enabled. Now let's quickly check what functions are available within the binary. I'm just going to type info functions before starting the binary. Here it is. If you notice, we have system at PLT. If you notice, as we have seen earlier, the binary has a call to system at PLT we can make use of this address and invoke it using appropriate arguments in order to execute system commands. Like I mentioned earlier, this defeats both ASLR as well as NX because we are not relying on the addresses from libc and thus we are not bothered even if ASLR is enabled. We are not executing any shell code on the stack and thus we are not worried even if NX is enabled for this binary. Now there is another way to obtain the address of this system at PLT. We can just open up a new tab and type obj dump dash d vulnerable pipe grep system and we are just dumping three instructions after this address. If you notice 401070 is what we have got in here. This is the system function from glibc. So this is the address of system function. If you notice, we have the same address here, 401070. And if you go back, 401070 is what we have gotten even earlier. So once again, we have gotten the same address using obj dump. Now the next goal is to find out an appropriate argument to system function so that we can get a shell. Let's check if the binary has any references to the string sh. 
So I'm just going to run the binary by setting up a breakpoint at main. Now let's use Jeff's search pattern command and let's search for the pattern sh. If you notice there is a large output so let's scroll up. We want to look for the references within the binary so that we don't need to deal with nx and aslr. Here it is. If you notice there is one reference here. This is the first reference that we have gotten and sh is actually available at 402029 address. So we have gotten a reference to the string sh. Now we need to find a gadget that can place this address in register rdi. So we can call system function which will take sh available in rdi as its argument. So let's load the binary into ROPPER to be able to search for the gadgets. I'm just going to the next tab and let's use ROPPER. Let's type file vulnerable. Now let's search for the instructions pop RDI. There you go. Looks like we are lucky because we have gotten a useful gadget within the binary itself. So basically we need three addresses. The address of this gadget, the address of sh string and the address of system function. Right, so let's begin writing our exploit. I'm just opening up a new tab and let's type exploit.pl, I mean vim space exploit.pl and let's once again write our regular lines of our exploit, the shebang, this line. And like we usually do, let's specify 256 characters, which is going to be the offset to RBP register. We are using the same vulnerable function with 256 bytes of input. So we are just going to use the same exploit template here and let's append 8bs and this is going to be rbp and right after this we should be able to overwrite the saved return address which is going to be stored in rip. Now this is where we want to specify the address of pop rdi gadget. So let's use junk and let's append pack And let's specify the address of the gadget with the instruction pop rdi which is this so i'm just copying this and let's paste it here remember we are just using the addresses within the binary itself so we do not need to add it to the base address let's also add a comment here with the instructions that we have gotten from the gadget here it is, we can just copy this. Let's just paste it here. So if you notice, this is pop RDI instruction. So when pop RDI instruction gets executed, something which is on the top of the stack is going to be popped into RDI register. In this case, we want that something that is available on the top of the stack to be the reference to SH string. So let's use junk append pack with the option q and let's specify the address of the string sh so let's go back to the jeff shell and let's copy this 402029 and let's just paste it here once again Let's add this in the comments here. SH from binary. Okay, now we are done with setting up the argument for system function. Now all we have to do is invoke system function. So let's quickly grab the address of system function. I'm just going to execute this once again here. 
so we can just grab the address of system function pack q and we are just pasting it here let's add 0x in the beginning and let's use a semicolon and let's comment it out as system at plt from binary and let's also add this as from binary there it is now once this is done we can just print junk and let's see if this exploit works i'm just saving the file let's give it executable permissions and let's quickly test it by using dot slash exploit dot pl cat and let's pipe it to vulnerable let's hit enter let's type some command oops there is a segmentation fault and the exploit failed we will have to debug it using gdb and understand what happened so let's first generate the payload using exploit.pl and let's save the payload in the file payload. Now let's use gdb dot slash vulnerable space dash q. Let's use disas vul underscore function to get the address of this ret instruction as usual. And let's set up a breakpoint here and let's run the binary using the payload that we have just generated. There it is, we have hit the breakpoint and we are now about to execute pop RDI, which is expected. So let's type SI. Yes, we are about to place the address of this string SH, which is looking fine. So let's type SI. And we are now about to execute this ret instruction, which is going to take us to this system at PLT. Once again, this is expected. So let's type SI. Now we are within this system at PLT. So let's type continue. There it is. We encountered a segmentation fault at this instruction. If you remember, we discussed this problem earlier. This is a stack alignment issue. So we need to ensure that the stack is 16 byte aligned. To fix this, like we did earlier, we can add an address of ret instruction in the beginning of our gadget chain. So once again, let's go back and use our wrapper tool to find out a gadget with the instruction ret. So I'm just going to use search slash one ret. Here it is, we found one gadget. Let's copy this and let's go back to our exploit let's quit this shell let's use vim exploit.pl and let's place it right before this pop rdi gadget pack and let's paste it here ret all right once again this is from binary itself let's save the file and let's try to execute the exploit once again let's hit enter and let's type some command and there it is the exploit worked and we have successfully circumvented nx and aslr protections just by using the addresses within the binary remember we disabled pie which stands for position independent executable and thus we are able to use the addresses that we have used in our exploit. So this is how red to PLT technique works. We need to have certain gadgets and functions available within the binary and PIE should be disabled within the binary. If these conditions meet, we can easily exploit a binary even when NX and ASLR are enabled.